We're joined by author and close friend of the late Duke of Edinburgh, Giles Brandreth, who's just released a new biography about the late Queen. It's a bestseller already, it is. I understand. Uh, ITV News Royal Editor, Chris Shipp, who's sweating it uh, in the green room this morning. Yet again. Going yes. through all the details, uh, as far as you can in the last 47 minutes. And the writer and broadcaster, Nels Abbey. A very good morning to all of you. So, Chris, we need to come to you first. Um, what have you... Well, so far. as I did last week, and I've learned how you can now watch Netflix on 1.5 times speed, which exactly. actually means you get through a lot more of the episode <laughs> than the 47 minutes that we've had since it went live. Um, a lot of it really was a build-up to the wedding. Everything was wonderful, everything was perfect, and then it all went wrong, and they kind of blame the press for it going wrong, turning on her, but also blaming the institution for saying you, they... I'd seen it, Harry said for 30 years, they were starting to brief against me. And this is when he's saying my brother was... My brother's office, he said, was doing everything that we promised each other we would never do, because we saw that in my father's office, Charles's office. Um, so already turning on his, his brother's aides for saying that they were briefing uh, against him. Uh, the other thing, key point, we, there's also some, some um, conversation about the time that Meghan, as we already know, uh, wanted to take uh, um, her own life. Uh, her mother just describes how just dreadful that was. It broke my heart, she said, because Meghan was constantly being kicked at uh, by the vultures. And then there's a whole thing about the baby as well. Do you remember the big debate at the time? Should Meghan and Harry show Archie to the world? Um, and actually, Doria Ragland, Meghan's mother, says it was almost as if it wasn't their child, it was the institution's child. Well, that is almost true, though, isn't it? That is how it is. And that, that whole debate it... about why should a mother, you know, so feel like they have to stand on the steps. Oh, well, interesting, Jenny after... Bond was there on earlier, and she was because obviously she was in the royal rota, wasn't she? For years. So she was saying that actually uh, she was only ever fed one lie uh, during enti her entire time, and she believed it was when Harry and Meghan had the baby that the baby had already been born, but they were told Meghan had only just gone into labour. I remember that day very well. It's a bank holiday Monday, and yes, yeah. they've already been labour, and yet the baby born a long time. But do you know what? I mean, look, we, we haven't got... To, I, well, I haven't got to episodes five and six yet, but... Can I um, just read something from episode five that I've read um, that uh, others are reporting? Because there's plenty of people watching it this morning in, in, in tandem. Prince Harry, in episode five, admits that it was actually his choice to step down as a senior royal. Uh, it was never her... She never asked to leave. And then they have David Olasoga, who's a historian who's already been in the other episodes, saying this was indicative of the tabloid press, just the sort of misogyny of calling it Megxit. Giles. There's nothing new in this, interesting. You mentioned about the baby. Uh, when Prince Charles was born back in 1948, uh, there weren't photographs of him issued for several days. And rumours started. Why are we not seeing this new baby? Rumours began that maybe he was uh, malformed in some way. And it became quite a scandal. And the Queen, well, she was then Princess Elizabeth, was quite distressed. She thought, it's my baby. It's the first few days. Why should there be mm. photographs? But the Queen, being the Queen and the system being the way it was, said nothing and uh, least said, soonest mended. I think it might have been mm. several weeks, wasn't it, or something? They wouldn't even get the Charles's mm. name for several yes. weeks mm. or something. It was but, very, very different uh, in 1948. But, N Nels, there's a big piece of information here that we kind of throw away. That Again, she's repeated her suicidal thoughts. Indeed. I mean, that in itself should be the most single piece of the most important information out of all of this, because there's only one... Res there's only one real response to that, and that is you have to be really respectful of that human being when she says something like that. Absolutely. I think the key thing, the key distinction as to what actually happened in the, in the first... In the, in the parts of the first hour of Volume 2 that I've seen is that her mother confirmed that she had said to her that she thought of taking her own life, which was, of course, for a mother to hear that from her child, and her child so high-profile in such a very, very fantastic role, um, must have been absolutely devastating to hear, but left her in a, in a complete state of panic. And you are absolutely right, there is only res one response to that, which is we have to take care and make sure that this person's given the right tools and uh, mental health condition, mental health treatment that is needed for them mm. to recover and Should get we, better. Let's take a listen to Harry's clip on this. I was devastated. I, I knew that she was struggling, we were both struggling, but I never thought that it would get to that stage. And the fact that it got to that stage, I felt angry and ashamed. I didn't deal with it particularly well. I dealt with it as institutional Harry as opposed to husband Harry. And what took over my feelings was my royal role. I had been trained to worry more about what are people going to think if we don't go 
to this event, we're going to be late. And looking back on it now, I, I, I hate myself for it. Mm. I think that there is one of the most important, significant mm -hmm. parts of this story. Chris, really, do you want to really? say no, I'm just there's a key point just after that actually, where Megan says, "I wasn't allowed to get help." They, the institution, the monarchy, were concerned how it would look if I went to get help. And I think she said something quite similar to, to Oprah Winfrey she did. Um, mm. about 18 months mm. ago. But that was mm. the key. Let's point go she... live to New York. Uh, we're also joined by our North America correspondent Noel Phillips. Morning. What is being made of it over there, and the things that you've just heard there? about a reconfirmation that those suicidal thoughts were present, they were real, and that the institution and Harry himself felt guilty in a way now that they didn't do anything to help her there and then. Well, Ranveer, I think a lot of people who will watch these episodes will struggle not to sympathise with uh, Meghan's mother, Dora, who was incredibly emotional, talking about the fact that she was on the verge of losing her daughter. Her and both Prince Harry felt hopeless and, and didn't know what to do in terms of trying to help Meghan. But let's just remember that this series was always high stake for Meghan and Harry. There was a lot riding on the success. And if we look at the numbers, it has been a huge gamble that has paid off. And we've seen how much it has resonated with everyday Americans here in this country. We saw last week the likes of Alec Baldwin, Brian Cox, talking out in support of the couple. And we can even show you a clip now of Meghan talking about the support that she uh, received from the R&B singer Beyonce, who texted her following that bombshell interview with Oprah. Beyonce just texted. <gasps> really meant. Shut up. Just checking in. Just checking in. Just casual. I still can't you said believe, you're gonna, you said I you're still gonna... believe she knows who I am. Go and call her. No, it's okay. She said she wants me to feel safe and protected. She admires and respects my bravery and vulnerability and she thinks I was selected to break generational curses that need to be healed. Wow. Mm. Uh, Giles, your views. There is a Westminster Abbey carol service hosted by mm -hmm. Kate, uh, Princess of Wales, today. Uh, you've written a book about the Queen. And What's yesterday, your... the King was remembering the Queen at Westminster Hall, mm. where she people, so many people walked past her. What impact do you think this is going to have? Because, as you say, Chris, he does turn on his brother. I mean, we hear direct accusations. Yeah. Well, in a way, the, the King and Queen Consort in... are also going today. This is like a show of unity, which we're told was always the plan. I mean, some people might speculate that maybe they've uh, they've all come She's, together today. We've got Lorraine waiting, our real queen waiting. <laughs> yes. to, just Giles, your point. I'm quite relaxed about it, and I think the, the the royals here will be relaxed about it. Life goes on; they're doing their duty. They're not okay. going to comment on this. It's a family trauma, and we are sympathetic, okay. of course, to their story, hearing it. But actually, the okay. royal story Giles, goes on. Thank right. you so much to all of you. We'll talk about it more tomorrow. And I know Lorraine, you're going to be talking about it because there's so much, isn't there, this morning to unpick. There really is, and it obviously has just landed. There's some extraordinary... I don't think they can come back from this, really. I think the relationships now are totally fractured.